What is up guys and gals, it's been about 10 minutes since the last episode finished and as you can see we're making pretty good progress down into this mine so let's talk about some of the goodies that we found in between episodes. So we had coal all in over here, we have gold right here, we have crystals, we have iron, we have all kinds of amazing stuff going on. In fact I think we just became incredibly incredibly wealthy. Hey, hey, the portal closed on me again. Let me take control of these guys one by one to reset that pathfinding. Kind of a little bit of a exploit to finish this problem, but they need to mine all this stuff out and bring it up along with them, so what can you do? Release him. There we go. So you definitely want to use portals. I can't express that enough as you play the game. You are going to find yourself being very, very frustrated if you can't get portals in place. I would use them extensively. I mean, if you have to mine this out right here without portals, good luck. That's going to be a giant, miserable experience. Let's kill that poltergeist. Alright, so that poltergeist is now out of the way. Our portal closed again, weirdly enough. Didn't it? Wait, what? They're walking through an invisible portal, so never mind. One of those little buggy bugs. But it's alright, we're an alpha. I, I'm not going to apologize for alpha bugs because that is what alpha is all about. Bug squishing. Once we get all... What in the hell is that? Absolutely not. What? That thing doesn't look very friendly. I don't know if I want to fight it just yet without armor. I'm just going to have these guys haul, I think. I've We've got more than enough gold. I think we've got enough iron to last us a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at our tech tree and figure out what are you doing. Cancel that order. Absolute. No, you don't need to you don't need to trim the bush. What are you doing? Just leave it as it is, on natural. All right, so looking at our craft tree here. What do we have going on? So we haven't placed a slime torch, which it's going to be all up on our case until we do that. We can't make food or cook a, any kind until we do that. So let's have him place a slime torch. They are unfortunately very dim, so you're never actually going to use a slime torch. There it is. And so now that we're in the crafting tree a little bit further, we can make a pot. How much iron do I have? We have 15. I'll take it. Silver, pink crystals, gold. All right, so there's our pot. And then the next thing is a campfire kitchen, which is needed for grilled meat. Okay, I'm not super sold on that just yet. However, we do need planks, so let's do a couple planks, I guess. But not of the exercising fashion. Ooh, planks are awful. Are planks the ones? I can't remember which. I think planks are the ones where you're like in an up, like an upwards push-up position, and you just like stay there as long as you can. Your arms get all jiggly, and everybody laughs at you. All right, so we've got six of those there. So six planks should be perfectly fine. It's gonna take them a while to craft it. That's right. This game does have craft time, so somebody's gonna have to actually go down in here. Please tell me that portal didn't close. Well, there's one more thing waiting to be hauled. What is going on here? Maybe he's going to go do it. I hope he's the one that's going to go do it. Yeah. And so what you'll see is when we go to craft stuff, he actually gets this little meter. And I'm really, really impressed by the presentation of this game. If I had to pick one thing that I think sells this game more than anything else, the presentation is just spot on. It reminds me kind of Rius or Reyes or however you say that game's name. Where they may even be made with a similar engine. I don't know. They both look very, very similar to me, though, and I like it. They both have amazing presentations, and I think that's something they have going for them. Now, what we need to do now is sheep hunt a little bit. Nobody got trapped down in here, right? And nobody's, like, climbing across a mountain to get at that stuff. Okay. Let's drop... Where is a sheep at? There he is. So we'll drop a portal right there. We're going to assign him to be killed. He is the sheepy victim of our slaughter. I do indeed. Uh -huh. I can only assume that that's dwarfish for all kinds of sheep slaughter. Uh -huh. And so as you can see, this isn't really going to go too successfully. Because the sheep can outrun you, you end up in weird situations where you can't bludgeon it to death. Like it should, if the animation starts, it should probably count the hit to eliminate this problem. But we killed him either way. He should drop some wool for us now. 
Yeah, wool, and that looks like poo, and also some meat, so later on we can actually cook ourselves up some real meals. Oh, the goblins are here. So basically what's going to happen now is the goblins are going to wipe us out, and then we're going to have to waste time respawning. That's almost exactly what's going to happen. So there it is. We actually suffered our first attack. The goblins should piss off now and go somewhere else. I'm trying to unflag him for combat, but it's looking like I can't do it underwater. Now, this means that our use of teleporters is going to have to be even more astute because we actually can't go solve these guys right now. They almost always spawn right on top of that location. On the plus side, they didn't steal anything. Usually they kind of steal stuff, so it should be okay. They only attack that one time, and the few times that they have attacked me, I've ended up with way, way, way worse casualties, like losing all my dwarves. So that time they came in, they left, we should be good. They'll just patrol around their house now. I think that's their chieftain, or it's just a guy with some bongo drums on top of like a mushroom crab. It's, it's crazy. It looks like something out of Starship Troopers. It looks like that thing in Starship Troopers that like the girl jumps up on its back, or the dude, I don't know who did it. They shoot a hole in its back and then they drop a grenade down into it. That's what it reminds me of. But anywho, let's chop down some trees because I can almost reasonably assure you that we're completely out of wood right now. And that's actually a good thing that they didn't wipe us out. I was really concerned about the breadth of the LP. I was really worried about getting wiped out by goblins and being like, Alright, well let me do a ginormous cut right here while my dwarves respawn, and then we'll be back. Oh yeah, that should be more than enough wood for the- Ooh, a miner's book. Okay, I'll take that too. Now, that mine is not tapped out, but I don't feel like we're equipped well enough to grab anything else out of it for now. Let's see if maybe we can get our way towards some wooden armor. Let's see here. Wooden armor is going to be after the bucket and the door, maybe? Oh, the door. Okay, so let's do the door first. The door is going to take four wood. I'm sorry, five wood. I can count. I tell you guys that all the time, but every time... I proved myself wrong, and apparently I can't count, so we're going to put a lock on that bastard. There it is right there, our first little kind of bulkhead. I don't know, it's kind of a weird looking door. But in any case, we've now advanced. I think we have to place the door too, which is like the really kind of shitty part. Let's go to our crafting menu, and I'm going to drag the door down to there. And then we're just going to put the door in a random spot. Oh, it needs a back wall. We'll put it right there. Put her there. Let's also chop down all of this stuff. Anything that's like this roughage that's close to us. These trees are spiny looking, or maybe scaly looking. They look very, very unfriendly. Like, I wouldn't want to climb that tree just because they look sort of bristly. They got like a Joshua tree thing going on. As soon as that snail's dead, we'll take his ooze. Nobody knows where the ooze of the snail comes from. Some say it comes from the front end, some say it comes from the back end, but... There's not a whole lot of biologists in Dwarven culture. They're not. They're more interested in killing the biology than actually learning from it. That is a lot of goblins, and they are mouthy too. And they have weird growths on their necks. Should probably get those checked out. Get some antibiotics. Got like a sebaceous cyst thing going on. Gross. Shiver. Should probably also grab all of that. I don't see another. Oh, there's a sheep right there. I want him too. I want you, you sheepy bastard. Let's flag him and tag him, and hopefully his wool doesn't fall down into the ocean. Because that would be a major, major problem. I was kind of hoping you would pin him that way. Or her. I don't really know if that's a you or a... What's a male sheep called? I don't know. A ram? I thought a ram was just a goat, though. Okay, good. So the stuff didn't fall off. We should be able to gather that. It's going to give us a little bit of wool, and the wool is going to be important because we have to make ropes in order to make armor. Crafting tree. Random door, are you erected? He's like, I am erect. Very good, door. Now, there we go. Wooden armor. So we got to make a bucket before we can make a rope. So let's make a bucket really quickly. And that's what we needed the planks for. I remember now. And you get three buckets for three planks and a nail. So that's not a terrible exchange rate. Somehow they built a bucket with one nail. Three buckets with one nail. Which is pretty impressive. Now we want to make some ropes. Which I think will be yeah, in that trade goods menu. That's just going to take one wool. And we should have two of it. So there it is. Ten ropes. 
now that we have the ropes, we can go into this armor right here. We can also make bows, and I've heard that bows are very, very good. But I'll make those in a little bit. I'm not going to focus on them right now. Let's fuck use on making ourselves some armor. Why there are leaves on the armor, I couldn't honestly tell you. No clue there. And we have five, so... There you go, five armors. Now we need to go through to our dwarves. And drop one of these onto each one of them. And one of the things I really like about this game is that the equipment actually shows on your dwarves. That kind of thing sells a game for me. I talked about that in towns. I've talked about that in just about every game that has equipment that I've ever played. That is a major selling factor for me on any game. Is Does your equipment show up when you put it on a character? If the answer is yes, I'm usually happy as a clam. Got one club left. Everybody is clubbed. Okay. They do break their pickaxes from time to time, so you'll have to keep an eye on that. It looks like we have a pickaxe missing. If you're mining anything other than dirt, the pickaxe the pickaxes break very, very quickly, so. Now that they've got full wooden armor, they should be okay for the next little bit. I wouldn't, like, send them into combat against this giant horde of goblins, but, but against any of the nighttime nasties that come along, we should be alright. Is there anything else to give our attention to? I should probably chop down some of these trees up here. Now that we're in the third episode, we should probably talk about what the goal of the game is. Well, the goal of the game is just to dig down into the earth and find unique stuff. And there's a portal hidden somewhere underground that'll take us to the next level. I'm hoping to do it in this LP. In fact, this LP, I had meant to make this LP last just this first level. And once we do this, if you guys are like really, really stoked about this game, he's climbing up and over the mountain. Damn it, buddy. What are you doing? Just breaking my heart here with how dumb you are. There we go. So we'll now release him. As soon as they get those trees down, let's have a look at our crafting menu, as always. We can do simple fences. I don't know what a fence does. Let's have a look at the info. Slows down the enemy's advance by a bit. So it's a defensive structure. Not going to be a giant thing that I want to build right now. I should probably make one just so that our crafting increases. So there's our one picket fence. In our crafting menu, we'll have that replace that right there. And I'll put it, oh, I don't know, like right there so that when they're trying to climb up this, it kind of messes with them. Maybe it'll bug them out or something. You play the game how you have to. I'm not cheating. I'm just trying to be... Trying to be adaptive, and I get the feeling with the way things go over corners, like, they have trouble climbing a lot of the time. And I feel like if I put some kind of accessory right there, it may help me out a little bit. You haven't hit level 6 yet. We've got a great base. You guys, if you're not familiar with the game, this is like a big deal, having this base right here by the time goblins show up. We were really close to having armor and actually being able to put up a fight there. The fence is now down. Or the fence is up, I guess. If the fence was down, it wouldn't be a very good fence. We can make a beware sign. Now what the beware sign does is your dwarves will actually see this sign and they'll turn around. It'll cancel out whatever their order is. So let's say we had somebody come over here, we have a battle, and a bunch of equipment gets dropped over here. Your dwarves will do dumb stuff, like they will constantly try and come over here and steal this equipment. I was worried they were attacking there again for a second. The dwarves will constantly come over here and try and grab the equipment. If you put like a beware sign right here, they'll be like, oh hell no, every time you try and send them over there and you'll be good to go. Now, that fence... What else? We're getting a little bit further in. Let's do a mixed green salad. Let's bang this thing out for sure. Need leaves. The integral part of any salad. There we are. We have our leafy greens. We actually place those on a table. So if you're having trouble feeding your dwarves, what you'll want to do is you actually find your table. You go to your crafting menu and you're going to put these mixed greens in here. And then you just stack them up on the table over here. There they are. And so anytime a dwarf gets hungry now, he'll just come back over here and handle his biz. We need to send some of these wounded guys off to rest. Let me have a look at everybody's health. How are you feeling? After he drops off? We're under attack. Where? Oh, beetle. Whatever. Take this guy, and we're going to tell him to go rest. Same thing for him. He's looking okay. He's not looking beat up too badly. And they're going to go to sleep for a little bit. Now, they don't regenerate quite at the rate that I would absolutely be enamored with. But they do... 
They regenerate all right. It's probably going to take the remainder of the evening for them to get themselves situated. What is he doing? I have no idea what this dwarf is doing right now. I should probably get on that. You can do it, I believe. I believe. Sometimes the climbing on the walls out of water is a little janky. But there are other options that I can kind of partake in. None of them are necessarily... Oh, I don't know what he's trying to do right now. Hopefully he climbs back out. There we go. I don't know what we're under attack by. I didn't click it fast enough to figure it out, but at least he stopped. Let's go ahead and make a sign so that they don't go over here. Where is that sign at? There it is. So we need bones. Weak. I don't think we have any. Yeah, we're actually flat out of bones right now, so we can't actually make that. It's a little disappointing. Let's make some bows, actually. I've never used a bow, and I'd like to. So let's grab, I don't know. Make like four of them. That seems okay. And I know we have a couple people in here who are archers. So we have an archer right there. Let's give him a bow so that he's actually using his ability. This should increase as he does his deal. I'm not completely sure. I think the arrows are just like in your inventory. And so do we have any books that can teach people how to use bows? No. Well, I've heard good things about bows, so let's equip them. And once we equip the bows, we'll maybe play around... Actually, yeah, they seem to get the job done. We'll play around with the idea of maybe fighting some of these goblins or maybe hunting something. Is there anything to hunt? Well, there's a pig over there. A warthog from the looks of it. It's got its tail up in that weird warthoggy way. But Pumbaa may get his head kicked in, unfortunately, because meat is delicious. And we love meat very, very much here at the Nerd Castle. I may be being presumptuous, but I love, I absolutely love steaks. I can't give them up. I never could. Never will, never could. Let's do a pot right there. We need some coal. All right, campfire. Let's go ahead and go to our crafting menu. Get that down right there. And I don't know if I have to put this inside or outside. I guess I'll put it right there. I don't want to cook inside anyways. We'll fill the whole place up with smoke. We might want to consider making this place nicer too, like knocking out the walls and putting a nice planky walls for now. Is there anything down in here? Some glowy mushrooms and so Oh, I didn't see that coal over there. That coal might be an interesting venture to go down that way. This zombie over here is probably going to be our first look at... <laughs> well, his accuracy leaves something to be desired, but at least he handled it. Nope, zombie's going to burn up underwater, which is an impressive feat. Very, very impressive feat. Must be made. He's a zombie made of sodium or something. No, don't break that down. Now that we have that, we can actually go to our crafting menu. Let's make a steak dinner, although it looks like it needs leaves. Yeah, it needs... They're going to base the whole thing around garnish, I guess. Just a little weak. I don't think the garnish makes the steak, necessarily, but... I'm not a chef. What do I know about anything? Let's see... That's a good supply of leaves right there, plus it'll allow us to get at that coal. Let's dig down this way, and once we get all this stuff ironed out, it'll actually give us a big old supply of leaves. We'll cut this way, we'll get even more coal. I know we can make a guard tower somehow and assign people to it. I'm going to put it right here. Maybe put two or three dwarves in it so they can just fire out that way, but I don't know when we're going to have access to it. And once they grab all those, I know I'm saying once they a lot, but once they... <laughs> I mean, we're always kind of waiting for things to happen in here since there is no speed-up mode. But as you can see, they're getting more efficient at doing stuff since there are more of them. I don't know what that's going to do for our wood supply. Let's take a look. 37 wood. So we've still got a lot of wood. We're also picking up quite a bit of resin. So might be worth considering putting some torches in here just to light it up a tad. 
I may also expand the base out a little bit. That might actually be a unique idea. Like, put a second hatch right here, dig this down and make use of what's already been ex uh, excavated, and just kind of connect them so there'd be like a little walkway right here with a ladder, and this will make like a second location where they can bed down and relax. Yeah, let's do that. Seems like a cool idea. This game gives me little Minecrafty ideas while I'm playing it. It makes me very, very stoked. Let's make some ladders. I think like 10 ladders should be enough for the... Yeah, it should be all right. And then we'll also think about maybe making a hatch. Hey, take the ladders. All right, so maybe we'll go back. Sometimes the UI gets weirdly stuck. I don't remember how a hatch is made, but it's either this or it's like this. No? Oh, I am just completely wrong. Let's go find it on the craft tree. Let's see here. A hatch. I went right by it. There it is. Oh, it's on the bottom. It's the same thing that I was making, but in a different position. Sometimes I wish there was a little bit of ambiguity right there, but I don't know if maybe there's something else that uses the same pattern up top. Let's put the hatch in our inventory to replace the door since we're not going to be using it. Put the hatch right there. Start putting in ladders. Getting rid of some of that bush. Yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty cool. This is going to be pretty badass, I think. And what this will do is this will actually be a big old room that runs all the way down to here. Once we've run the room out that way, oh, I'm getting excited now. I'm getting that. I'm getting that towns buildy feeling where I know what I'm gonna do. I do wish that towns would like, as it was when we first started towns. I wish I could accelerate, but what are you gonna do? I think I'm gonna break off the episode right here because my hard drive is flashing at me. But my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. I hope that in the next episode we'll actually have access to all this. I may do some of this building off camera. I don't know. Scream, rant, and rave down below if you don't want me to. But then again, I'm not sure that this is going to air in time. So I will see you guys next time, and take care out there, everybody.